Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the Style Esports Season 17 Playoffs. Tonight, we have the first round of the Sharima Division Rumble Stage, the highest tier of competition here in the Style League. Number eight seed, Charles and Goons, is about to go up against the number nine seed, Mint Mongoose, in a best of three. The winner will move on to face number one seed, Season 16 runner-up and perennial powerhouse, Chaotic Solar, in the next round of Rumble, while the loser of tonight's match will be sent directly into the lower bracket with only one life left in the playoffs. We also have the long-awaited Cookie Monster duo returning to the caster desk, consisting, of course, of myself, Crewman44, and my good friend, the Wookie Monster, joining me for the call. And uh, we were just talking earlier, Wookie, about how this is a, a good match for you to come back with, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of high ELO players here, and I'm excited to see what these teams have brought to the table for this first playoff game. Yeah, and we are jumping straight into our Game 1 draft here, guys. We are going to be wasting no time this evening already through this first phase of bans. Yone, Maokai, and Orn getting removed by Charles and his goons. On the other side, the Mongoose, Mongeese, Mongeese, uh, have <laughs> yeah, banned the mongoose. away the, the Hecarim, Oriana, and Ezreal. Has left open the Cassante who, while he did get nerfed on this patch, technically speaking, that nerf was a little bit of a joke. So he is going to get locked away here on B1. The Rel Swain comes out in response. Yeah, I do like the response because, I mean, showing Cassante very early on means, hey, somebody's going to be in your face. And who better to do that, uh, you know, take that champion on than Swain himself, uh, just, you know, healing right back up to where he needs to be with his ultimate, so... We'll see how this draft plays out. I mean, uh, yep, I was going to say there's a one player on Charles' team that, that plays a lot of Vayne. So I was expecting oh. that, and that's locked in right away along with the Janna. And I, th I feel like I've seen this quite a couple of times, even in my solo queue games today, uh, where it's Vayne Janna. Um, they, they've gotten a little mm. bit of changes uh, on this patch with Janna. Uh, she's got like a kind of a mini rework. Uh, she's got a little bit more uh, auto attack range and she's got a little bit more poke dealing, uh, you know, and her abilities, I feel like, can keep Vayne alive in this scenario. Interesting. Yeah. Vayne, of course, uh, is generally known. One of the main weaknesses of the champion is very, very weak early game, right? And uh, very yep. low range as well. So, you know, the uh, Janna certainly has her work cut out for her in terms of getting this vein through that laning phase. But it'll be really interesting to see if they are able to accomplish that mission. The Sivir is going to be the answer. So another relatively low range AD carry, but does definitely have a whole lot of wave clear that yep. can be difficult for the vein to deal with. Yeah, and that, uh, you know, that kind of plays into what Rel wants to do as well. They can set up dives even with uh, certain junglers. So I expect Charles to ban some, at least another jungler uh maokai was banned away that you know that champion is disgusting on his own but <laughs> i feel like uh they could pinch more of the jungle here maybe and we'll see that uh, mint has already elected to, to get the jarvan out of the way they know they're going for engage and hey silas another you know three ultimates yeah i would i would say that Sw or silas is a very good ban here considering uh you know we still have the Swain ultimate, the Sivir ultimate, even the Rel ultimate, if you really want that one. Yeah, so we'll for see sure. what Charles does here. I think the Jarvan ban does make some sense. It can be a really powerful combo with the vein where you just sort of yeah. give her a wall to condemn people to. So uh, that uh, at least seems like a pretty, pretty prudent ban. Charles really taking all of their time with oh, that okay. second ban. The Trindomir is going to be what's taken off the table. Interesting. Um, and what's interesting is that Mint have already banned the Oriana, so they just wanted to get rid of the Jarvan as well, because uh, that that combo is is a brutal pairing, especially you know with the Ball Carrier, even Hecarim as well. So I respect the bans coming out from Mint. Looks like they're gonna pick up mm. Milio here and maybe flex that Rel over to the jungle. I've seen it quite often nowadays. They will lock it in, so I'm yeah. expecting that Rel to go into the jungle here. The owner special, as uh, yeah. you know, anybody who was <laughs> watching last night will know, he's pretty good at that uh, that champ. Now yeah. we'll have to see what Purge the Surge is able to get done with it. Yeah, and Rel, I mean, Rel Jungle, it kind of fell off after the nerfs came through. But, you know, if you stick to it, I feel mm. like 
especially in the way that owner does it's gonna be a really potent pick when it comes to these skirmishes and these mid-game team fights and lilia locked in um means there's gonna be a lot of late game and mid-game team fights coming around for that team as well eight legs in the jungle you love to see it oh, oh never Lilia's mind <laughs> uh, yeah. they tricked me <laughs> just getting word here in the client chat that we had a little bit of a whoopsie in the draft lull here so as uh, you just mentioned wookie that lilia is in fact a gwen that has been locked away here for charles and goons it seems um that gwen does that mean it's gwen jungle gwen jungle yes indeed i haven't seen that for quite some time um, don't know how healthy the clear is nowadays, but, you know, being a jungler yourself, have you seen any Gwen jungle lately? Uh, no, no, it's it's not common whatsoever. Uh, you know, I have seen it, I think, in a couple of games that I've cast previously. Uh, again, not necessarily too recently, though. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to wonder if maybe the Charles and the Goons are, are overthinking this a little bit. I mean, certainly the Gwen can provide some value here does have a pretty good matchup honestly into the rel you know you can get through that uh that hp bar shred through those those resistances that the rel is going to be stacking up but right you know the lilia can kind of do something similar and uh i feel has a little bit of a higher ceiling in terms of playmaking you know with the ultimate potential there with the lullaby but you know we'll see uh what the gwen is going to be able to get done maybe we can find some stats no, I don't see any Gwen stats ah. for Naomi's desire. So it's a little bit of a mystery here, Wookie. It is indeed. And I feel like uh, even the, the Lilia would, would have been a much better uh, roundabout to their team composition here. But with the Gwen, I feel like it's it's definitely like, are we using her for an offensive measure or defensive measure? I mean, I don't know how uh, much of, of a power spike she has during the early game on the jungle slot. But, you know, as we all know, Gwen is really good into tanks, like you said. So hopefully, maybe they can get uh, some good usage out of the Gwen, um, like you said. And, I mean, looking at the other side, I feel like the Ari throws me off a little bit, too, uh, mm. on the on Mint side. Because, yes, you do have the Swain for some pickups. That, that is going top, it seems, by the way. So yeah. we're yeah. going to have this Cassante versus Swain matchup. And, uh, you know, Ari, Ari is kind of an interesting one. It's, it's, it was a counter pick to the Syndra, right. uh, which, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, skill shots involved in the mid lane. So we'll see how that Ari pick turns out here as we get into the early game. Certainly, yeah. I mean, Ari, I think, with, really what you want to do with, with the uh, Ari, right, is you want to maintain that priority in the mid lane and ideally you want to be moving around the map to use the uh yeah. the really uh excellent mobility that you get with the spear rush to try and group up with your teammates and, and try and find these odd numbered fights so the question kind of becomes is ari going to be able to maintain that mid priority into the syndra who is often right. known as a little bit of an oppressive laner in her own right exactly and so we're gonna have to see uh, how the skills match up in this is in this uh game this first game of this best of three, the even the Sivir and Melio, I feel like it's gonna be really good for them. Uh, you know, condemning condemning the Sivir isn't the brightest spot for Vayne right now. I feel like that lane is gonna be really rough in the early stages. So we'll see how Mint decide to, you know, are they gonna prioritize bot lane? Maybe even the Ari and Rel could, you know, kinda invade and maybe go down bot side. I feel like a lot of the action is going to be down there. At least for uh, you know towards the mid game. Yeah, certainly. And in terms of the early game, though, you know, it's kind of the more that I look at this draft for Charles and his goons, uh, it it really does feel like their early game options are going to be extremely limited, right? Like Gwen is not like she will scale up to a point where she can uh, duel incredibly well, but that's not really her strength in the first few levels. Yeah, um, she's probably just going to be wanting to okay. run through a couple oh, clears oh, of the boy. jungle before she's really going to be looking to scrap. So it honestly kind of brings me back to the mid lane once again here. I think it's kind yeah. of up to July 8 here on the Syndra to sort of keep that that mid prio for the side of, of Charles and uh, and just, you know, uh, give that point of pressure over to the rest of the team to prevent them from falling too far behind early on. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Syndra has been a very, very potent pick in recent meta. So in, with the splinter stacking, we're going to have to keep tabs on that and make sure that 
you know, she's gotten a lot of splinters during the early game. I feel like in this matchup specifically, like, you can you can definitely out Pokenari before level six at least. And I'm expecting mm. maybe with the Glen, I I mean, I feel like Lilia might have been a little bit more effective in the ganking department, but Glen really has some weak ganks and weak early levels, like you said, so they're gonna have to navigate this early game really well if they wanna make it on top. I think so. I think so. It's definitely going to be really exciting as well to see what the Swain is going to be able to get done in that top lane into the Cassante. was also a counter pick, right? So that is yeah. you know, something that we do have to remember. The fact that the Mongeese uh, did manage to get counter picks in both of those solo lanes for this game. Really pretty creative drafting coming out from them, honestly, on the red side here for game number one. Uh, and the Swain, I think, should be pretty heavily favored in that matchup, right? It's going to have that range advantage on yeah. the Cassante and is, is just kind of too tanky. Uh, to really get burst down, I would assume, even if the Cassante does manage to get on top of him, but I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, it's a flip the script for Swain. I mean, Swain has to survive the early levels against Cassante. I mean, Cassante mm. is a definitely one of the champions of all time right now, and uh, <laughs> yes, very yeah. skill expressive. So we'll have to see True. how Killed by Joka, you know, kind of navigates the early game. Maybe he can get some topside pressure for this Gwen to maybe take Rift Herald early on. We'll, we'll have to see um, how the jungle interactions mm. work. And yeah, like you said, I definitely think mid lane is a primary focus, but I feel like uh, it's kind of flip-flop for both of these teams. One team has to survive early. The other team just really has to scale and, and you know, pressure, push out maybe the dragon side. So I'm definitely looking forward to the extensive team fights in the mid game. Yeah, pretty much a certainty. I think the fact that we will be getting those explosive team fights in the mid game, um, because you know we have to kind of consider as well. Like, yes, uh, the scaling for the side of Charles is really, really strong, but it's not like they're going to hard outscale their opponents either. You know, Sivir, Swain, both of those yeah. champs are going to scale extremely well into the later portions of the game, also. So, could be a really tight one that we have to start things off, or it could not be. We'll see in just a minute. But before we get into this first break, Wookie, you have a game one prediction for us at all? Which, do you, if, if you were playing in this game, which draft would you rather be piloting? I love the mint side because of what you said earlier. They got counter pick in two lanes. So hopefully, yeah. you yeah. know, if they really pressure out the early game with those two counter picks, they could definitely make the game go maybe 20, 25 minutes. We'll have to see. Certainly. Yeah, the, that would be a statement uh, if the Mongeese can make something happen early on here and just kind of snowball this one towards right. an early victory. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. They are, if I recall correctly, the Mongeese are the ninth seed. So on paper, the weaker team coming in tonight. But of course, anything could happen. And we will see very soon what exactly is going to transpire in our first playoff match of season 17. Guys, don't go anywhere.
All right, folks. Take it all in. The beautiful sights and sounds of Summoner's Rift as Charles and his goons, as well as the Mint Mongoose, take their positions here for game number one. Any runes or summoner spells to point out before things really get started, Wookie? Uh, pretty standard, except for the Ari. I mean, I have seen this before with the fleet footwork, uh, but it's it's definitely a defensive rune, I feel, in this uh, manner going against mm. the Syndra. Yeah, yeah that one... really placing a lot of priority on that early sustain, it seems. Yeah, exactly. And I mean... I do the same thing with a Kali when I'm against the Syndra. It's it's kind of just what you have to do. <laughs> you I have see. to sustain. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. And I mean we'll the log sword, that that's that's Ooh. interesting too. <laughs> that is yeah. No, it really is, isn't it? Um yeah. We could be looking huh. at another uh, LeBlanc situation, if you remember a oh, couple my. of months back where uh, static shiv was the first buy and no. uh you know i i feel like that that build has kind of fallen off in recent times but maybe it's a comeback or maybe it's a you know kind of a thing that effortlessness knows i mean it does kind of bring us back to the conversation we were having during the draft right about how the priority in mid lane is potentially going to be of supreme importance with these drafts so maybe that's the idea for effortlessness here is just heavily prioritizing the sustain and, and the push in mid and just kind of uh, hoping to play things out from there. Yeah, maybe. We're getting a lot of level twos here on the bot yeah. side. A little bit of pressure there. A little bit of pressure in the top side as well. Makes sense for a Sivir Milio uh, duo there, but Certainly. not too much to talk about with these laners. Although Joka is taking half health already by the Swain. And I feel like we've expected that, right? Yeah, I think things going to chalk here so far. Definitely pressure in these side lanes for the Mongeese early on. We do have our junglers clearing towards opposite sides. Naomi's Desire on the Gwen clearing bot to top, and Hirsch and Surge's Rel going top to bot. So we'll see if, yeah, if the Gwen is good. going to be able to make something happen with, with the Kasante up there, or if the Rel is going to be able to put some pressure on that Bane, who is, of course, as we said earlier, very vulnerable in the early game. Yeah, good scatter of the week there. But yeah, I, I did not expect Gwen Jungle to be that proficient in, in clearing way uh, or the jungle. Uh, but I guess so. It's, it's still a thing. I remember it being quite a bit of a potent pick in the jungle uh, maybe a season ago. Good charm there to land. Looks like a bit of trading going on everywhere at this point. But Gwen seems yeah. to be taking the scuttle already. Yeah, we did get uh, Rel, I, it seems, securing the South Crab as well. Or maybe just, I guess that's a ward, That's actually. a ward, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just moving in to take the Crab now, but should be able to accomplish that. As now Mid Savage, pretty far up in the lane, is going to be able to pop the Ghost and create some space from the Cassante. And Gwen just doesn't have the damage to finish the job this early on without any items. So a trade of Ghosts there between the Gwen and the Swain. Oh, here we go again. Oh, nice scatter. Everlessness in trouble. In comes Purge the Surge. Oh, the Never Move pulls Ooh. it back, oh. and that's going to be the Death's Hand. It's first blood for the Savage in the top lane. Everlessness oh. going underneath the turret, and he's not able to get out enough damage with that oh. last auto attack. The Syndra will survive, and we're tied up one to one. Oh, man. That was so sad to see. Effortlessness, you tried with the auto attacks. I know you built a long sword first, but just did not get the job done. At the end of the day, yeah, looks like just a... didn't quite have enough. Uh oh, Sivir is extremely low on mana down here. That spell shield somehow did not block the tornado. Must have fallen off the last seconds. The so map now feeling oh. aggressive, popping the ghost. The exhaust will come out, but it's not too useful after the ghost has already been popped. And it's going to be the map flashing forward, claiming the kill. Thro throwing underneath the Whoa. turret, not going to be able to get away. Uh, the turret shot will trade one back, though, but the kill going over to the Melio, that's the map absolutely on it with that early double. Yeah, and look at the gold lead already for Blue Squad. They're a thousand gold ahead at this point, and I mean, I think that tower dive was pretty worth it if I'm a vein, right? We talked about how she's weak early, but <laughs> by no means <laughs> is she out of me. the game early. Yeah, could have fooled yeah both of us so that's a really good start especially with the berserkers greaves very early on oh. that's gonna make this lane a little bit more harder to you know for the sivir and milu to scale up like we talked about yeah definitely the case and they're gonna have to 
potentially be playing a little bit on the back foot now. Oh, you know, no. it's all summoners down as well. But July 8th now, maybe a little bit too far forward. Gonna get flipped back and doesn't have the flash. No flash. That is gonna be the kill going over to the rel. And we're all tied up on that scoreboard once again. Three kills oh, for each boy. side. Wait, look at the realm now invading the enemy jungle right after that kill. And hmm. I, I mean, they I see Gwen, right? See. So knows yeah. that that's a free invade. Nothing yeah. too much there to steal away, though. Yeah, it looks like they're aware of it in the bot side for the map and this this Um, But yep, the ward's gonna spot out purge, and that's gonna mean that the map is we'll just take it easy for now. We do have a Chemtech Drake on the rift right now, and oh wait, this is a oh. potential engage here. Level 6 nope. for Joko, not going to land at the Q3. Is going to get tagged by the Never move there. Mint Savage, of course, still holding on to the Demonic <laughs> Ascension as well. Another uh... Q3 about to come out, sidestepped Ooh. from the Swain. Another Never move landing. <laughs> this is just a meatball fight up here. Ah, but one of these meatballs is, uh, is a ranged meatball. Yeah, <laughs> that's and that true. One. And one kill on the board. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, has built already the Lost Chapter, so might be going for that early Leandries. Uh, I know a lot of Swains usually try to go for the Rylai's Crystal Scepter early just to get that guarantee slow. Ooh, spear Ooh. Rush committed Ooh. in the mid lane. Charm Ooh. not going to land, though, for effortlessness. Man, he's been trying, too. Um, I mean, he's, he's built quite a bit of components here, as we can take a look at the... <laughs> The item list on, on the Ari. Oh, that's sure. going to be the Gwen oh. making her way into the mid lane. No Spirit Rush, remember. Can the Scatter land? The Needlework is not going to find the target. And Effortlessness does manage to walk that one out. Gwen yeah. ultimate down now. Fancy footwork for both of these mid laners, it seems. So yeah. definitely have to keep an eye on that static shiv check. And, and I mean, clearly they have deviated away from going straight for static shiv, as I've seen before, and going for the Merc Treads, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it has been getting hit by a lot of these scatters from July 8th, and the magic resist just by itself is going to be a lot of value into the Gwen, but Savage popping the Ascension in the top lane. Going to send out that Demon Flare nice and early. Lands another Death's Hand. Joka is just kind of getting drained here. That never move will not connect. If it did, probably would have been another kill. Yeah. Asante is going to be able to dash back underneath his turret. Yeah, we talked about the pressure that Swing can give early, so it seems like Joka is just struggling, and... We've had a gank up here in the top side from Gwen, but it's just oh, hasn't been enough. Oh. in. Syndra does have the flashback. The uh, Unleashed Power is committed, but not quite enough balls Ooh. to finish off the Ari. And that is going to be the first kill of the game for Effortlessness. Yeah, finally getting something on the board for this struggling mid lane as well. I mean, this is, uh, this is kind of going back and forth <laughs> at the moment, Grubin. It really is. Yeah, these teams have managed to keep the gold dead even. So far, we're about nine minutes in. And they are just trading in all of these lanes pretty aggressively. But overall, yeah, it's, it's been punch for punch so far. Yeah, the only real difference is there might be a dive top lane here. Got to look okay. out. Gwen is coming. But Absolutely. Kenobi, and Naomi's... Savage here is quite low on mana. Ooh, they don't know. They oh, absolutely Gwen is dashed don't over know. the wall. No ult or ghost for the Swain. He's just going to get cut to pieces. Naomi's desire, desire to kill, and we'll absolutely find one. Yeah, I mean, Purge did not know that that Gwen was coming, so they were just waiting for Swain to push in the wave a little bit more, but it was just too late. The Gwen snuck past, and uh, that's going to be another kill over on the blue side. Uh, very, very sneaky from the Gwen there. Manages to get around the waiting realm. Yeah, Rel's going to respond to this wave up top, so they're going to know where the jungler is still after that gank. A little bit, I guess he's giving up the wave here. Interesting decision. Yeah, I guess they're going to back. About, uh, stopping the base, I guess, for the Cassante, but didn't want to chase too far towards the turret. So yeah, it's just going to be the reset. I wonder if maybe uh, Purge could have had an angle there to go towards the Rift Herald, because you know yeah. that the enemy top laner is going to be going for that base. Um, so, you know, at, at worst, it would have been like a, a 2v2 maybe with Syndra moving over, but not going to go for it. Yeah, not going to go for it. And Static shift check. Looks like the Noon Quiver was picked up for effortlessness. Mm. Um, continuing to, you know, kind of drop the land this time. But the okay. uh, the damage from the spells is just not really there <laughs> because we've gone for the AD build. You know, we'll chunk Syndra down to about 25% HP. So that is absolutely significant. 
definitely is. And I mean, that pressure kind of alleviates a little bit more for the jungle side as well, as we can see. Um, it looks like blue side is kind of taking crab and clearing the mm. jungle wards here, but I would have expected that Rel made her way down just to make sure that yeah, everything just... wouldn't be cleared. Hmm, Not able okay. to get into that bot river quick enough to get the crab. Looking for Janna now, but uh, is easily able to uh, tornado her way to safety. Yeah, that's that's uh, one of the good things about Jane. I mean, uh, you you have engaged composition like like they have here with the Swain, with the Rel, and here we go. Oh no! Mm. Yeah, the junglers are going to meet bad. each other in the tri brush. It's the ghost. Not being popped just yet for the map. Everybody kind of holding on to those summoners for now. Needlework was used by Naomi's desire. Dragging out alive just... for 90 more seconds. So we're not really fighting over anything <laughs> in particular. Yeah. Just kind of throwing throwing damage across at each other at this point. Oh. Man, nice Ooh. boomerang. Yeah, they, they have a ward. They don't know. I don't know if they know <laughs> that they're on a ward, but it's certainly there. And uh, this Janna might have to back before this dragon comes up. They could trade the Rift Herald. We see Gwen walking up topside here. Yeah, Shelly has been pretty much ignored uh, so yeah. far in this game. Nobody has really been very interested in keeping her company. And we do only have, we have less than two minutes now until those turret plates after, actually fall. So stocks on Shelly actually going down uh, pretty dramatically. Yeah, if anything, I mean, Sir Purge has been down here for quite a bit and i feel like yeah they're getting ready for drag so that's gonna tell naomi's desire to just go straight for this herald mm. oh good chunk from july 8 here in the mid lane gets effortlessness down to about 50 percent holding on to the spirit rush though not committing that just yet static shift purchase so gonna be able to clear that True. wave and rel's coming up too for this potential gank yeah leandre's also done for the syndra though so both of those mid laners on that one item spike Rift Herald should be taken any second now. Naomi's been on that for a while, so expecting that one to go down very, very soon. There it is. Has only one minute to drop it, though, if, if they want to get some yeah. of those turret plates. Not a lot of Side time. Of the back. Hmm. Oh, there's the Spirit Rush getting forced <laughs> out. July 8 in the 1v1 has just been putting on so much pressure. Cassante is going to go all out here in the top lane. Demonic Ascension will come out, but the Cassante oh burst God. damage is almost there. Not quite enough to finish the job, but Mint Savage completely forced out here in the top lane. Wow. Cassante uh, doing Cassante things. What can I say? He's really cassante super hard up there, isn't he? Yeah, and this is this probably allows for the dragon to be taken by Blue Side here as... Oh, getting TP'd into a stun doesn't feel yeah. quite so well, but... Yeah, that, that July 8th is going to provide some pressure for them to get this dragon here. And, you know, this is definitely a strength that Gwen Jungle does bring, right? Is the shred on these neutral objectives is absolutely there. You're going to get the true damage from the center of your snips. You know, every single time, the dragons and Rift Heralds, not very good at dodging that one. Yeah, that is true. And uh, the pressure continues to mount up. Not too much of a gold lead for Blue Squad, but, I mean... We have to see how these mid-game team fights might erupt, and I mean, Naomi's Desire doing a really good job in the CS department uh, on mm -hmm. this jungle pick. So I'm I'm yeah. impressed by it. Yeah, it's absolutely been working out quite well so far, and you know you're absolutely right that the gold lead uh, at this point is not too significant, but the objective lead is absolutely there. They're going to be on Mountain Soul Point here potentially in just four short minutes, and that is yeah. when the Mongeese are going to need to have an answer. Yeah, don't certainly don't want Gwen and Cassante building up those resistances. I mean, yeesh, I always love a good mountain dragon. Um, but, you know, eh, Red Squad really wants that. <laughs> yeah. They really want that. And we got to say as well, Wookie, these uh, counterpicks in the solo lanes, they have not really been working out. I mean, yeah, Savage was able to put on some decent pressure early on, but... You know, that really un nice gank timing from Naomi's Desire kind of shut that down a little bit. And now we see Joka, you know, building up a little bit of magic resist as the Mercury Treads completed, as well as that Null Mantle uh, or Negatron Cloak rather on top of that. And uh, he's just shrugging off yeah. now a lot of this damage that's been coming out from the Swain. Yeah, definitely uh, putting up a tanky front here as Cassante, you know, I, I still don't understand how that champion does so much damage and tanks yeah. at the same time, but, oh, effortlessness. 
Gonna look for the charm. We'll find Ooh. it. Let's see those auto attacks, Ari. Come on. Not quite <laughs> enough to get the kill. Okay, maybe a potential lane gank to the bot side here from Naomi's Desire as we get more topside shenanigans. <laughs> Joka looking for the all out there. Couldn't quite get behind Savage, though. Couldn't find the angle he was looking for. Yeah, definitely uh, interesting rotations here. Purge has been doing a really good job of uh, invading this game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it has cost the, the rel a lot of tempo, right? You were highlighting earlier that huge CS diff. Okay, now we have found the angle in the top lane. Savage is going to try to ascend into his demon oh, form, but no. it's just not nearly enough. Joker the Demon Slayer going to take him out. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. And it only goes to show that Cassante is one of the strongest top laners in League of Legends right now. And, uh, <laughs> that's, that's just it. Uh, he's gonna have yep. a lot of pressure up in the top side. It's gonna bring Purge up oh, there, but... Oh my automate? goodness. One more Ooh. auto attack. The Melio ultimate and the flash away is barely gonna keep Thrall alive. Wow. But this bot lane is also looking pretty doomed. It's every single lane for Charles and his goons has just been popping off this game. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, uh, Rift Herald drop bottom lane might be able to get this turret all the way here and that'll be the a really good influx of gold for blue team and this is not what i expected from the scaling Seriously, team here yeah. <laughs> it has been uh, a little bit surprising and and very concerning for the mongeese right the fact that you know they've drafted for this early priority that's most of the tools that they have with this composition are are tools that you want to be using to move around the map and skirmish in the mid game right but they just haven't really been able to make it happen. Charles has been one step ahead of him so far this entire time. Yeah, definitely. And even... Ooh, wait a minute. Okay, looking for July 8th. We'll get the flash off of the Syndra. Dashing forward, but we've already used the charm. The Manit uh, Storm is going to get a little bit more CC down, but the Syndra just refuses to die. Oh, no. And now the map is here for the cleanup. Throw the last survivor, but not for long. As that's going to be the map picking up the triple kill and shooting a crossbow right through the hopes of the Mongeese. Yeah, when the map on Vayne. Vayne, a character who needs time, gets that time and the money to build whatever she wants. Uh, that's a dangerous game you're playing, especially with a composition that is somewhat tanky. Yeah, and the map now, I think three or 400 gold away. Oh from my god, Trinity Force no completed. way. Closer now, looking for the kill onto Jonesy, who's gonna have to just run full sprint back underneath the tier two to survive. Tier 1 in the top lane falling at the same time. The oh entire map is just disintegrating before our eyes for the Mongeese. They are quickly running out of room to maneuver. The Mountain Soul Point spawning now as well, and they just have nothing to work with. Yeah, they really don't. And Purge trying his best to recover what jungle camps he can, but uh, the map is just broken apart. There's no towers taken for Red Side quite yet. And uh, the mongoose, or mongoose rather, are on the back foot. They're going to have to find some back sort of pick. Oh, another oh, no. scatter is going to land. Thrill's oh. just dead. The power is going to be unleashed on the poor little Melio. And will not survive to tell the tale. Oh, even, even. the big <laughs> chicken? Even the chicken <laughs> have some mercy, July 8th, please. July Show some wants compassion. to end this one. They definitely want to push down mid, and uh, looks like a dive might be coming for this. Oh, it's, it's oh, no. a dead shiver. Is going to go for the spell shield and the okay. flash and the ult, and will survive. Is not dead, but my goodness. I mean, goodness that just tells gracious. the story of this game pretty well. I think the fact that Sivir underneath her tier two has to burn everything and run back to the fountain yeah. to survive. It's, it's, a, it's the classic, uh, I'm using all these skills defensively, but they're long cooldowns, and that means they're not going to have them up for the next potential fight. And, uh, you know, Baron's on the table for blue side. They could definitely go with it, especially with an Escalated vein, Triforce, plus the Storm Razor. Oh, boy. You can start to feel the desperation coming out from some of these plays. Purge is yep. just, you know, the Rel is... is... Oh, that was uh, pretty close, but the charm is going to miss. Once again, the power is Aww. unleashed and effortlessness getting taken down. Looked effortless indeed for the Syndra there. Yeah, he's trying his best to just try to get anything. And like you said, desperation plays like that one are only putting them further and further behind. Uh, like I said, they really need to come together and try to find at least a pick before 
any of these objectives are taken but it's so hard when three of three of the blue squad have bounties on their heads gotta try something here yeah but but what what do you try i mean they they've been uh what have they tried so far this game i mean effortlessness has been trying to put on the pressure in mid but the re just hasn't been successful in actually finishing off these kills you know even when the charms land even when you know you you get good damage down it's just not been enough to finish the job joka potentially gonna get collapsed on up here towards the top side but it's just not gonna happen Cassante's just gonna walk away Cassante can 1v3 at this point, I'm pretty sure, with that Jack show and almost another completed item. It's so rough because you have to send three people oh, just no. to deal with them. Oh, oh. oh no. That's getting ugly now, Wookie. Yeah. Four and two Syndra. Pretty, pretty escalated at this point. Two items in, Leandris and the Cosmic Drive. Yeah, uh, I don't think that Static Shiv is going to do much now. No, I don't think it will. And that's the entire idea behind that build. Okay, we did oh. get a flash. I feel like Purge has kind of been the, the one the one light for, for the Mongeese in this game. Yeah. You know, the one person who's actually been able to make a couple of things happen. And you maybe know, they could to... steal this. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, Rel is pretty good at stealing these objectives. Yep. T1 Baron right now being attempted by Charles and his goons. They uh, are not going to fully commit to it, wow. though. They know that Rel is in the area and could go for that steal. They're not willing to opt in for the 50-50. A wise choice, I think, for Charles. Yeah, don't want to give them any chance to come back in this game. They've got such a substantial lead, almost 7,000 gold ahead. They're really wanting to make sure that, hey, any Baron attempt that we make needs to be a 100% chance for them to get that smite. Yeah, absolutely. No reason uh, to go for anything less right now when you have such complete control over this game. Could even just play for the Mountain Soul if they wanted to. That's going to be in about 90 seconds. Uh, but realistically, you know, they are far enough ahead to where forcing Baron should uh, should be a pretty easy play for them to go for. We do see Joka moving towards the bottom lane, but does, of course, have the teleport to join up with the team if necessary. And they do see... The RE down here. I don't know if they necessarily have vision on Rel at the moment. So they're not, you can see, they're not committing to the Baron right now until they get vision on that enemy jungler. Yeah, also they need to wait for Joka maybe to push up a little bit more and uh, make sure like, hey, like if you, you know, need to join in for this team fight, you can join in. But looks like they're just starting it up and I yeah. don't blame them. Now is the time. We've got July 8 around the backside of the pit there, just to make sure that there is no rogue rels uh, waiting in any of these bushes. And uh, we'll be able to determine that, yes, uh, we are completely relless in this part of the jungle. And that does mean that the Baron is going to go down right around 23 and a half minutes. That's going to be Charles and the Goons picking it up. And the gold yeah. lead now about 9k. Seems like it's only a matter of time before they take this first nexus. Now, they are grouping for this drag, and I do like this approach. It's it's a last attempt at, hey, let's do something. Maybe get a pick here. Lands, a Janna forced to ultimate pretty early on. They're flashing for the Magnus Storm. They only get the Syndra with it, though. And now, how does the rest of the fight look? I can't tell because my client minimized. It's going to be the Syndra who takes down the Swain. The Gwen is wow. getting the snips out, though. The exhaust is not going to nearly be enough to stop Gwen from rampaging over this team fight. Spirit Rush for Effortlessness in retreat. The RA just running, trying to survive, but flashing forward as the Ooh. map gets out that last auto attack on a rampage is the vein this game. 15 to five on the scoreboard. Charles just gonna fall back to the dragon. Ah, oh, man, it was so close. Swain got the shutdown on the Syndra, so. A little bit of hope, but uh, did not last long because Vayne now doing Vayne things. Yeah. It's, yeah, this, uh, there's just going to be too many threats at this point yeah. on the side of Charles and the Goons. There just really is. I mean, Gwen, Cassante, Syndra, and Vayne all putting on the damage here in game number one. And this is... Uh, this is going to be a hard one to take. I mean, you're, you're going to be a little bit disappointed in yourself if you're the Mongeese because they, I, I thought they had what it took to, to provide the pressure in the early game, but they just could not. And if the scaling people have the advantage in the early game, well, that's even worse, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we liked the draft for the Mongeese here, but yeah. absolutely, it just really felt like they, they weren't uh, able to ever find their footing. Right, they weren't really able to pilot the draft in, in the way that we were expecting them to, 
and uh, it kind of resulted in just them not being able to find any any advantages through the early game. And then, you know, when you're, when you're playing against a composition like this that gets ahead, it's just really hard to come back. Yeah, the most they can do right now is kind of turtle a bit. You know, they can't take any fights. Uh, you know, they, they can't take any team fights. They can't get caught. They just have to sit under turret for now and kind of just pray for the best. Yeah, well, I don't know if those prayers are going to be answered. <laughs> it's looking like God is not feeling very merciful today. Swain will ascend, but he's retreating at the same time. He's not able to move forward. Oh, we do have Joka moving in. July 8th goes for the scatter. Can't quite find those priority targets. No champions taken down just yet. It's just going to be the continued push into the base for Charles and his goons. Savage chunk down on the front lines. There's a scatter. Does get the Amelia, who immediately has to ult and flash away to survive once again. The Unleashed Power comes out, and it's going to be Savage going down the first kill of this team. But another scatter from July 8, who is just not missing down the stretch here. And now the final hour for the map. Tumbling forward, picking up some more kills, padding the stats. And that's going to do it, guys. 19 to 5 on the scoreboard. 27 minutes on the game clock, and Charles and his goons absolutely demolish this game number one. Yeah, there's nothing more much to say about that one. Triple kill for the map, and uh, more than 11, 12,000 gold lead for the side of Charles and his goons. An absolute masterclass here in the first round of the Sharima Division playoffs. Charles looking poised to uh, potentially take this first match tonight and get themselves to that next round of the winner's brackets. Who's your uh, who's your game one POG, Wookie? I mean, I don't think there's really too much to break down, honestly, in terms of what actually happened this game. I think we pretty much covered all of it uh, sort of in the, in the final moments, you know, before the Nexus fell there. Uh, but, you know, we can, I think, take a brief moment here to celebrate the dominance of Charles and his goons. But which player do you feel like was the most dominant, the most instrumental and making this first game as one-sided as it was. I know this doesn't look good on the damage charts, but Naomi's Desire really put on a show. I mean, going deathless in this game and, and playing a character who I thought wasn't going to be irrelevant until, like, mid-game, right? But ended up doing a lot for his team, especially for Joka up in the top side, who was struggling a little bit early. But the gank setup and, you know, just the response ganks that came through from this Gwen was really good. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Naomi's Desire definitely didn't have too much in terms of, you know, damage to champions, but absolutely the objective control was yeah. there, right? And if we look at the stats for damage to uh, to objectives, Gwen easily <laughs> tops that chart out at 51k. And we compare to the jungler on the other side, the Rel, only 7k that game for Purge the Surge. So uh, definitely... I mean, obviously, uh, the fact that Naomi's Desire was getting all those neutrals was facilitated by the fact that all of the laners were also popping off, right? It was yeah. like permanent priority in all three lanes, it felt like, this game uh, for the side of, of Charles. So, you know, definitely need to give over that credit where it's due. But, uh, you know, Wookie, I'm always down to go for the jungle <laughs> POG vote. So I think we can comfortably align there and give that over to Naomi's Desire with a very unorthodox Gwen jungle pick here in this first game but i think it is now time do you have any final thoughts on this game one anything else you wanted to say here i think we've covered it and yeah well deserved mm -hmm. for the charles and his goons certainly certainly and we are going to see guys after this short break if they are going to make it the 2-0 on the night and perhaps instill some fear in their next opponent or if the mint mongi mongoose will be able to claw back and find some purchase in tonight's match. Don't go anywhere, guys. Style Esports Season 17 Playoffs. We'll be right back.
All right, everybody, welcome back. We are going to jump directly into this game two champion select, guys. So we do have Mint Mongoose electing to remain on the red side, saying that that was not the problem. Draft was not the problem in that game. Uh, and they're going to be looking for some other sorts of adaptations to try and find a better result for themselves here in game number two. What would you like to see, Wookie, come out from the Mongoose? Uh, honestly, I feel like the Mongoose need to maybe try something different, try a different team comp uh, altogether. I mean, it doesn't really feel like anybody but Purge was kind of successful in what they were trying to do. But, you know, being on a rel, there's only so much you can do, right? Right. But it looks like going through this draft, uh, I don't know if you have the updated draft on screen by Should chance. Should be uh, accurate, yeah. Okay. Looks yeah, uh, we have the uh, Yone is going to get banned away first here by Charles and the goons. Um, yeah. I do actually, it seems like there might be a little bit of a visual uh, bug situation happening. Oh, is it? Draft lull here. Because um, it does appear that they are now on their B1 pick. Um, yeah. We are missing five bands. Uh, so... I, I sent you a draft link. Hopefully that oh. works. <laughs> um, there's another There's another link. I see. Yeah. Oh, that might be my fault then. That's okay. Um, I'll go ahead and break down the draft. They've pretty much banned the same champions, except we got one change for Mongoose side. They are electing to ban the Syndra out early. So definitely was a problem for effortlessness. Uh, I mean, the clearly... The Syndra was just a bit too much for one of the strong players on their team. And so they're going to elect to ban that. And Charles have actually switched out the Maokai ban from the first game to Oriana in the second game. And yeah. Yeah. The so Oriana just... was previously banned by the Mongoose on the red side. That is the ban that they dropped for the Syndra. And on the other side here, the Maokai, yes, yeah, I think you already mentioned, uh, has been left open now. Nobody going for it just yet, though. The Wukong actually going to be prioritized, interestingly. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, Maokai would have been a really nice slot in right there, going with the theme of what Swain wants to do, at least. Uh, but, I, I mean, Wukong is still pretty good at what he does as well. They're going to respond with a Karthus here. Wow. This is such a bold move, but I like it. Yeah, I guess Naomi's desire, just feeling the AP junglers tonight, potentially. Um, and, you know, that is kind of what led to the success of Charles and his goons in the previous game, right? It's kind of Naomi's desire, just power farming through that early game. And just, you know, when we roll up to these these fights around 15 minutes, uh, just was a little bit more powerful than what Purge the Search was able to bring to the table. So clearly that is going to be a sort of the game plan once again here uh, for Charles. Yeah, it almost get locked away. Ooh. <laughs> wow, the Soraka pickup there is a really nice response. The Karthus, obviously, as a support, uh, haven't really seen a lot of Soraka, but it's definitely one of those picks that, you know, once you once you lock it in against the Karthus, it's like, oh, well, I mean, I guess we just go even, right? <laughs> yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, the Melio, I think, in theory, can do something uh, somewhat similar. But uh, the Soraka, I think, as you already just mentioned, seems like a better answer into the Karthus, at least. So I think that is making a good amount of sense. I am still, honestly, a little bit surprised by the Wukong. I'm kind of, like, stuck on that Wukong pick. Uh, you know, we obviously did see uh, Kanavi uh, still plays the Wukong, as well as Levi, uh, you know, at, at Worlds. They both yeah. are still proponents of the champion, but... You know, I think in this in this context, we'll have to wait and see, right? But one thing that Wukong definitely is not, he, he's not a carry threat in the same way that he used to be, right? When Wukong right. was super broken and he had that crazy synergy with Divine Sundra, you actually could just solo carry games as Wukong. But those days really are behind him. He is all about the team fights now. That is the way that Wukong can shine. Those two activations of the Cyclone, setting up for the rest of the team, that's really his greatest strength. Exactly. And that means we're going to need to see the rest of the team, the rest of the Mongeese here, going to need to step it up a little bit here in game number two, where that setup might just go to waste. Yeah, I want to, you know, one thing about the Wukong, I will say, is that it provides a very similar role to what Rel wants to do. So maybe that they were thinking that, like, hey, like, maybe the Rel just didn't work for this game. Let's try something else. Wukong, hey, pretty yeah. similar in the tank, you know, setting up for the team, like you said. So maybe that was the idea there. And pairing the Varus with the Soraka, 
might be a little bit more uh, successful this time around. It's a different uh, ADC. I have not seen a lot of Varus play. He's kind of fallen in the ranks a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, debate. He's got so many builds. I mean, just pick one and it probably do well, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. That is definitely something Varus has going for him is that build diversity. Uh, I feel like well, the Twitch is going to come out in response here, so that is definitely a, uh, yeah. a bot lane we don't see every day. <laughs> That is definitely a bot lane we don't see every day, but pairing with the Janna is pretty good, honestly. Uh, making sure that Twitch stays alive uh, with the Janna ultimate, you know, and making sure that Twitch gets nice auto procs off his ultimate as well, uh, especially against the Wukong and people who want to engage on you. Wow. And Jace, Jace kind of is interesting here. So it's going to be a completely AD laners here in game mm -hmm. number two for Charles and the Karthus as the main proponent of, of magic damage, unless they do Twitch AP, which <laughs> I don't think they will. Yeah, unlikely. Uh, a Karthus generally is going to be really, really excited about being actually the only AP damage source on his team. Um, so I think wow. this draft is looking pretty powerful for, for Charles and his goons. The Jace uh, feels like a little bit of a statement pick. Like if they can dominate again with the NA Jace angle, uh, that yeah. certainly would bode extremely well for them. But in response, Mint Mongoose has come up with a statement pick of their own. Yeah. They want to say, hey, we see your Jace. We're going to up you one more and pick the Yasuo. Uh, you know, honestly, the Jace versus Yasuo matchup could go either way, right? I mean, I I don't really know the matchup myself, but it's a little bit more favored for Jace, right? Because he has that range advantage. He is a poke champion, but... You know, we've seen how effective July 8 can be at the poke, you know, uh, stage of the yeah. game, I, I guess you could say, uh, doing a really great job against effortlessness in the previous game on the Syndra. So maybe it's the same thought process here. Uh, can he sustain the Yasuo? And this also really is good pairing with the Wukong and Swain, right? Like just another form of knockup that we can try to get everybody CC'd and make them stay there, right? We want to people to stay in the Swain ultimate and I, I'm really interested to see how this matchup goes again for the top laters of both these squads it's, it's Cassante mm -hmm. and Swain again yeah I mean it is it is definitely interesting right because it's the exact same lock-ins that we saw uh as in the previous draft right is Cassante on B1 and then the Swain coming out on R1 R2 directly in response to that pick so we'll have to see if savage you know the the swain was able to get some early priority in the lane but as soon as he fell behind it just felt so doomed in that 1v1 yeah and i feel like karthus could potentially do a similar thing as the gwen uh for the early you know pressure on the swain but it's gonna be a different type right it, it, obviously karthus doesn't do the same things as gwen does uh, but I feel like, you know, if we see the same pathing from the junglers, which they were opposite sides in the previous game, we could end up with a very similar result. We could, we could. And for the sake of the Mongis, uh, we are hoping that that is not the case, but just have to wait and see. You know, they definitely do have uh, some really great Wombo potential here, as you were highlighting for us just a little bit earlier on. I do uh, want to take another minute to talk about the Varus pick a, a little bit more. Uh, I think we do yeah. have the time. But uh, you were saying earlier that you don't see too much Varus these days. I, in my opinion, I think the uh, kind of the main reason for that is uh, the fact that his on-hit build is generally considered to be the stronger Varus build at the moment. And uh, there's just a lot of other champions in the game that uh, play that on-hit style a lot better than Varus does. So right. he just doesn't really have a place right now in the meta. You know, one thing that I think the Varus will bring for the uh, Mint Mongoose bottom lane this time around is it's going to allow them to play much more defensively, right? With Sivir, you kind of have to walk up to the wave to auto-attack it, uh, and they they kind of got preyed on when they were trying to get those waves shoved in. You know, it was the map and, and Deseda just kind of pounced on them. Uh, in those moments yeah so maybe the plan for this time around is just gonna be like sit back just try and play super safe during the laning phase farm it out but you know i just mentioned a second ago the varus uh doesn't do on hit as well as a lot of other champions and the twitch is definitely one of those champions yep. that i think most people would consider to have a, a stronger on hit build 
Yeah, and what this kind of signals to me is that Mongoose really want to pressure the top side. I mean, those three top side champions right there are uh, re- a force to be reckoned with. It, yeah, you know, if yeah. if they can get ahead, so maybe this is just oh, we're sinking deep into having bottom side weak, and hopefully our our top side goes a little bit differently than last time. Yeah, certainly, uh, and that is going to have to be the avenue I think for Mint Mongoose. They do did get counterpicks in both solo lanes once again just like they had in the previous game we need to find them or, uh, or rather we need to see them find more success with those counterpicks tonight if we are going to get towards that game number three i definitely agree and i mean talking about the charles team i mean they have a pretty similar style that they want to do uh you know in in comparison to the first game right we just want to yeah. let karthus scale up i mean if he gets an ultimate off and gets some kills or assists that way hey <laughs> Nice first strike damage. It's gonna it's mm-hmm. gonna help for my Leandries and and you know just kind of do what we did last game pretty much and kind of let Cassante Joka on the Cassante really good comeback in in that top side. So maybe they just want to play bot side as well again. I mean a lot of the skirmishes kind of I mean there was a little bit more gangs up on the top side I would say, but mostly a lot of the advantages were on their mid laner July eighth and the map. So maybe we could see a you know similar thing but yeah it's definitely on the mongoose to bring this one to game three well what do you think in monster man you were leaning towards mint in that previous draft and uh, they have once again drafted something relatively creative here something that definitely has potential to get them an early lead and potentially snowball the game but after what we just witnessed and as you said, with Charles and the Goons drafting a pretty similar composition here for game two, for myself, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to bet against them right now. Yeah, I will say the one thing that will make me choose Charles in this game is because they picked the Swain again. Like, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I get it. It's a counter pick. It might go well. It might not go well. But what's for certain is that Cassante is a strong champion. <laughs> and if you can't handle him once... I don't know if you can really handle him again. I think a lot of the game is going to come down to that. What is the Savage going to be able to get done in that top lane versus the very Savage Cassante champion in that 1v1? Will Joka be able to hold his own once again and be that monster in the team fights? Or is it going to be Savage turning the tables and finding that early lead that Mint need to snowball the game? We will see, guys, right after this short break.
All right, style fans, welcome back to Summoner's Rift once again. Charles and the Goons still on the blue side here for game number two, and the Mint Mongoose still on the red. Hoping to uh, hold on a little bit better in this early game. Makes more stuff happen, right, as opposed to what we saw previously in that game number one. Yeah, indeed, and we see a little bit of changes here. We're going to see the Summon Airy for Savage on this Swain instead of the Conqueror from last game. So maybe going for more of a lane-dominant position uh, to maybe turn the tides this time around. Yeah, it's still running the Teleport Ghost Summoner spell, so no Flash for the Swain. Uh, also, no Flash for the Karthus. Naomi's Desire taking the Exhaust there. Pretty standard, I do believe, for Karthus yeah. players. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if Wukong invades, you know, without that exhaust, that's going to be a dead Karthus. And by the time that exhaust wears off, you're going to have your teammates in your face and protecting you. So good choice to pick up there. As July 8th, we see a little bit of pressure with the range matchup. Now, you know, this this we've seen this before, kind of, with the AD versus uh, the AP. But now it's the AD versus the AD, in a uh -huh. sense. Um, curious to see how this goes in the mid lane too, because we didn't really get to touch up, up on that. Um, I feel like Yasuo, it, it's definitely feast or famine for him, right? If he gets behind yeah. a little bit too much, it's pretty much you're gonna have to wait for the zero ten power spike. So, <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, the same is kind of true for the Jace. If he falls behind early, his impact on the game is going to be very, very tiny. But I do really like the way that you phrased that just a second ago. There, you know, previously we saw the Syndra versus the Ari. You know, uh, it's it's sort of that poke versus prio battle where Jace is wanting to uh, sort of chunk out his opponent and potentially look for for kill pressure, whereas Yasuo kind of wants to push the wave and roam and join up with the rest of the team. But it's the right. AD version this time around. <laughs> yeah. See how it goes. Also, interestingly, it is the Arcane Jace versus the No Skin Yasuo. So that could come into play here as well. Could indeed. And we already see a lot of good pressure coming out from Jonesy Jukes and throw down the bot side here, going for a reset already. Uh, we didn't really see this last game. I mean, Vayne Janna, definitely a little bit different than Twitch Janna, but I feel like it's the same concept, right? We just want to scale to level six and do lots of damage with the spray and pray. Yeah, Ooh, level advantage okay. for July 8 right now in this mid lane. And go for the bonk. Looking for the shock blast. Almost enough damage. Effortlessness. Already in trouble early on in this laning phase. Same with Joka here, though. Already out of mana almost uh, on the Cassante once again. Yeah. We do have our junglers once again pathing towards opposite sides. Trading off. Oh, actually... Purge, not mid. going for the Scuttle Crab just yet. Looking for that play in the mid lane. We're watching bot lane right now for some reason. But nothing <laughs> really will come to pass as Wukong cannot close the distance onto the Jace. And honestly, pre-6 Wukong ganks, a little bit underwhelming, just generally speaking. Yeah, it seems like uh, Naomi's Desire wants to try to maybe spot out this Wukong. Take it to the Crab, so uh -huh. that's going to go over to Purge, but just going to go back to the jungle, maybe take a reset here and maybe help out one of these lanes uh in the mid or top side i mean looks like the map in deseda came back from base and we're just like yeah we're or they didn't even base they were just yeah. chilling in the back here and what oh my gosh oh, the map getting chunked out a little bit Ooh. arrow is going to be sidestepped though and that means there should not be enough damage to finish off the rat although this wave has not crashed yet so it is a little bit of an awkward spot Dangerous. right now for the charles bot lane Wukong is on the bottom side of the map yep. right now as well. It looks like they know something's up, so they're going to back off before Wukong can Just actually get there. in time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dragon number one coming up as a mountain in five seconds. So uh, curious of what team wants to go prioritize this first. I mean, we do want Karthus to scale on Charles' team, and we do want pressure on the side of the Mongies. So maybe right. they can get the push in both mid and bottom side like you were talking about and maybe take this first drag for themselves that would be definitely a different look for purge this time around yeah it's awkward for the wukong though as the, the monkey also has not gone for the reset just yet similar to the ghost man the karthus not going for that either 
Um, but the as we can see, you know, the Wukong is already getting outpaced by the farm speed. Joka is getting oh. pretty low up here as Kasante was trying to get the wave in. There's going to be flash popped for a Savage. Needs to find, I think, one more. Never move here. Dashed oh. away. Joka able to make it out. Yeah, there's been a couple of so close moments here so far. And oh, as I say Ooh, that. Effortlessness dashing through the Jace there. I guess Joy didn't have the knockback or that could have been a very dangerous situation. Yeah, a lot of damage uh, from July 8th early on here. Only having two Longswords and Tear in that Doran's Blade. Um, it, it's it's definitely interesting to see this. I mean, they are on par with each other in terms of CS, but the poke damage is just a lot unless you're committing from Yasuo. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to commit when there's like three other people on the other wall, though. But oh, that's unbeknownst to him. <laughs> yeah. We do see the Jace just continuing to push in these minion waves for now. Karthus waiting in the wings, as you mentioned. Oh. Not wanting to look for any objectives just yet. And the Wukong is catching up. Not too far behind anymore is Purge. Yeah, no no real commitments made on either side so far. But it's looking a bit like bot favored for the side of Troll and his goons. But as I say this, they're going to walk into a ward possibly mm -hmm. be collapsed upon not wukong no alt though through, and that's right still not level six for either side both of those junglers gonna be getting pretty close though a couple more camps for either one of them they will get access to that ultimate ability huge power spike on both sides yeah we're just kind of waiting for something to happen because um there's not really much uh i mean even effortlessness didn't even go after that last breath on the jace yeah. there so Definitely just playing it safe. I mean, that's that's pretty fair. Joka might that's have... Um, yeah. Wanders almost. out from underneath the turret. He's putting a lot of pressure, and bot side things are happening, though. Gets the knockback there. <laughs> Never moved, though. Underneath the turret. Not quite in range to actually get that turret shot to come through. There we go. Dragon. Yeah, start it up. Thank you, spectator camera. It took you a while, <laughs> but here we are. Dragon chunk down to about 50%. Everlessness looking for the knockoff. The knockback comes through July 8th. Ooh, there is going to be the first blood as Yasuo didn't have any teammates around him. First surge going in now. Looking for the pick onto the map. Will pop both summoners to get away. And now with the exhaust down for Naomi's desire as well. They're not willing to go back in to contest the dragon, but the objective is reset. And the Mongeese yeah. are not going to be able to finish that one off. Oh, boy. That was just a free getaway for Charles and his goons. I mean, they got one, got out. Yeah. And they're going to be very happy about that as the scaling composition, right? Yeah, especially on the Karthus. They will get a wave Ooh. maybe in here on the bot side, but that's not going to mean too, too much, I feel. Uh, looks like Varus is going for the Serrated Jerk, so wondering mm. if he's going for the Duskblade build. And I know you said the on-hit was kind of what we expected, but I guess he's got different ideas. Well, I mean, the, the Poke Varus build is absolutely viable as well. You know, it's just... Uh... You know, it, it does have some more haters, I think, as opposed yeah. to the, the on-hit build. But it, it absolutely can still work. And when you're playing against, you know, a lot of these squishy champions, uh, you know, you absolutely can get some good value there if you're able to land those arrows. Effortlessness, though, getting jumped on in the mid lane does find the knockup. But this Yasuo just feels like he keeps getting bullied in the, in the 1v1. Yeah, there's got to be a point where effortlessness can commit to the the last breath and right you know whittle them down a little bit at least but it just seem, seems like he's falling a little bit behind not too much i mean he's got one death and the one assist from uh july 8th but not too much we're still scaling right that that's the name of the game i guess this time around i suppose so yeah both teams you can tell pretty pretty hesitant not wanting to make any mistakes in this early game Joka dashing forward, just trying to look. Oh, here we go again. A little bit. Oh, yeah, the junglers. <laughs> but they will both be spotted out on each side this time around. So Naomi's Desire not going to be able to get the drop Level on six. Savage. Yeah, the uh, Requiem available for the Karthus, but doesn't really think that either of those targets is in kill range. So going to hold on to it for now. And it is not the first strike. It is actually the Dark Harvest on yeah. the Karthus. So there's not really a reason to commit uh -oh. the ultimate unless you think you can get the kill. July 8th doesn't even uh, need the Requiem for that one. Just finds the solo in mid. Yeah, that looked kind of effortlessness a uh, little bit. Yeah, and he's going to grab a plate. He's 
Uh, man, it feels so bad for the Yasuo. Yasuo also does not have TP available. So this whole wave is going to go down. That's so good for July 8th. And we have to remember, you know, it, it almost feels bad to bring it up, but that Yasuo was picked on R5, Wookie. Yeah. This is effortlessness. Looking at the entire enemy composition and being like, yeah, this is a Yasuo angle. And now he's just getting bodied in this lane. Yeah, and, uh, you know, now he's really got to have his team kind of help him, especially the Wukong who can provide that knock-up with the Cyclone in order to set up maybe a kill here. Going for the last breath here. Could be an angle. Yeah, Purge in the area as well. Going to go in. Cannot quite find the CC. That was July 8. Able to flash away in time. That is a little bit of a win, though, for the Mongeese in mid lane. Get that summoner spell off of the Jace. Might be Disaster Dad and Bot here, though. Oh... Naomi's Desire going for the lane gang, just waiting patiently in the bush. And Thrall is going to have to immediately flash away to stay alive. Exhaust going to come out from Deseda. And it looks like that bot fight will be disengaged as we see Yasuo and Wukong onto the dragon. Looking for the first neutral of the game here as the top laner is going for a 1v1. All out committed by Joka. Demonic Ascension in response for Savage. Remember the Swain was the counter pick in top lane here again. He lands the never move. But this Cassante is just not going down. Wookie now the Requiem coming oh, down no. as well. There's a little bit more damage but the healing from the Swain is coming into play. He dodges away from the never move though as Joka is looking for the solo kill and he will oh. find it. cassante all over this top lane once again. 3-0 oh now God. on the scoreboard. They may have lost out on the objective, but Charles and his goons are looking poised to secure the victory here in game two. Well, what I said did happen. They got the dragon, but um, unfortunately, Cassante is still doing Cassante things. He didn't even have an item, and he can sustain one. through the Swain. That is so unfair, but here we go again with July <laughs> Again. Oh, oh. boy. Oh, we had already utilized the last breath. Not available for the Oswo in this instance. So mm. we'll not be able to chase down the Jace. Yeah, looks like they're just kind of permanently switching sides here. Uh-oh. Yeah, a lot of, lot more good tornadoes yeah. coming through from Effortlessness, but will it be enough? I feel like Naomi's got a good angle for this Herald here. Might be already on it. Yeah, seems like Karthus is going to be taking that one down. So we'll be trade of the early neutrals. And getting that extra influx of gold is going to be really, really nice for the Karthus and whichever friend he decides to share it with. Yeah, one kill on each of the top. Oh, wait okay. a minute. Purge is going to look for the Cyclone here, but this is onto a Cassante. It's going to take a while to take this guy down. He's just going to go unstoppable and throw himself underneath the turret. This Cassante thinks okay. once again. Yeah, nice play taken, though, from Savage, who does have a sizable CS lead. Uh, but it's kind of negated from that kill, unfortunately. And Map is going to just walk in no Ooh, man's land. Oh, uh -oh. Ooh. Ooh, sidestep on the chain of corruption. Wow. Really nice there from the map. Probably would have yeah, been dead if that yeah. landed. Yeah, the, the Dirk there from the Varus could spell death. Oh, here we go again. Okay. Ascending demonically in the mid lane, and that is going to force the flash off of Joka. So Savage... Finding a little bit of purchase there. Did have the item advantage right over the Cassante. Now with that Roa completed. And uh, yeah, there's another flash getting forced. Yeah, I got to say, the uh, the gold difference between the teams, not so much. But if we look at the gold from the Karthus and the Wukong, Karthus is a, up a 1,000 gold. So he's really scared. He's already got the Leandres. He's really set for these Requiems once, once they come along. Yeah. Um, you know, if anybody decides to fight, hey, just one press of a button can help out the entire team. It's almost kind of the the opposite of, of game number one, right? Where uh, Charles and his goons were winning out, but the gold was really close the whole time, right? It was just because they had all of this map control, right? They were just one step ahead in terms of their map movements. They were able to take all these towers pretty early on in the game. They were stacking up the neutral objectives very, very quickly, very early on. This time around, that's not really the case. You know, they haven't really taken any turrets yet. They traded the early neutrals, but they have already started to build up this gold lead for themselves, right? And they have this composition that scales so okay. That's uh -oh. Janna going to get it pulled back by the never move. Does have the tornado and the ultimate to disengage. A little bit of a cooldown forced out there. Yeah, that wasn't too bad from this Ada. Oh, here we go. July 8th. Might be in trouble here. If he commits, Ooh. no. Oh. Going to go in with to the skies. But the phase rush. Movement speed with the phase rush. Absolutely. Get away. Just leaving these bottom lanes here to kind of juke it out, uh, I feel like is is nice from the supports, but oh, I guess, uh, you know, I, I feel like the map 
could really get caught out here if he makes one too many missteps because Jonesy Jukes has that ultimate. The Chains of Corruption can really just outplay him very easily if, if not dodge, not sidestep like he did before. That is a it's kind of a nice rush thing. on Twitch. I'm just now noticing yeah. that. Is, that. is that is that a thing? I guess so. Uh, it's. I mean, hey, you want wave clear? You got wave clear, I guess, as a purchase, I guess. right? Yeah. True. True. I think uh, that's Joker's also. Kinda, oh, oh my God. Playing around in this top lane, could have gone for the turret. Will get it eventually, and is looking for the solo kill as well. Has the level advantage over Savage, but the sway is able to sustain pretty nicely. That's gonna be the requiem. Is it enough to kill off the Yasuo? Not quite. Everlessness hanging on in the mid lane. Joker gonna get tagged by the never move there, and there is the sway sustaining through the Kasante wow. all in. Savage making that counter pick work in the top lane, but in mid July 8, flashing underneath the turret is gonna be able to finish what the Karth has started takes down the Yasuo once again. And Everlessness is still pretty far from that 0 10 power spike. The oh Cyclone is committed as Purchaser is looking for Karthus here, but the exhaust and response and Naomi's desire just lands the last skittle over the wall. Soraka healing be damned, it wasn't enough. And now five to one on the scoreboard. Harold summons up in mid. Now things are really starting to go to pieces for the Mongeese. Man, I thought I had hope with Jonesy Jukes. Maybe, maybe turning the tides in the bot lane, but it just didn't happen. Soraka ult is just not enough, I suppose, uh, yeah. to uh, get through Naomi's Leandries. Yeah, it's just, uh, it hasn't quite been enough. And bot lane's honestly been very quiet this game, which is uh, is not a good thing for Lethality Varus, right? If you're going for the Lethality Varus build, right. you want to be pressuring that lane hard, right? You want to be getting those turret plates, you want to be forcing Twitch back. You want to be denying farm from the Twitch. But they haven't really been able to do any of that. And uh, the map is just going to scale so much better later on into this game. As Joka, not deterred. Got solo killed a second ago. Looking for another 1v1. Not going to land a Q3 there. And the top laner is just going to wander away. Yeah, we'll say the uh, there's a different item build path that uh, Savage has gone this time around with the Rod of Ages. So... Doing a little bit more successful this time around. I mean, the turret was taken, so it's not that much different. But, you know, is it going to be enough? Probably not in this matchup, especially with the Karthus there. Yeah, yeah, the Karthus is looking like he is probably going to be the big difference maker in this one. And here it comes right now, looking for a 2v1 play onto Savage's Swain. The Demonic Ascension is going to buy a lot of time here. We do have a teleport coming in for Yasuo, but eventually the Swain is going to get burned down as Joka goes all out. And Effortlessness has teleported into his... Oh, the last breath! Almost enough, but not quite. A little bit of healing coming out there from the Sada's oh, no. Janna. The map? Karthus alive. The map has managed to clear out this minion wave. And wow. now the teleport from July 8th to join the party will be able to defend his AD carry. And it's just Charles and the goons across the map, Wookie. Yeah, across the map. Very good coordination coming out from this team oh, right now. First search has okay. Cyclone here. Gonna look for it onto July 8th. Jace has the boop, though. Should be able to push Wukong away. Can he get to the Blast Cone? He cannot. The Crushing Blow is going to come out, and that is a big shutdown. Going over to the jungler the of the Mongis. The arrow is going to connect on the invisible Twitch. The map in trouble here for sure. I don't think anybody else is coming to the rescue necessarily, but no. he just barely manages to sneak past the Wukong and gets out to safety. But this turret will likely be forfeit. Yep. That will be a bounty collected for the side of mint and i mean good for them they kind of found a little bit of hope they're still about two thousand gold behind though and that's that's still going to spell disaster for this top side i mean hey it looks like karthus is already going for the second herald oh he's gonna um, be so strong oh this yeah karthus as well three zero and three level 12 already two level advantage in that jungle position it is gonna be so oh, so boy. difficult to deal with this guy yeah, and especially since he's also splitting his build a, a little bit apart uh, here with the Oblivion Orb pickup and the stopwatch. So he's got a lot going for him. He's got a lot of gold in his pocket, and he's 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 got 8,000 gold, that total, um, uh, comparatively to the Wukong, who only have 6,500. So yeah. definitely putting on a sport for this Karthus. I mean, the Requiem is up. They could really make any sort of play they want to right now. And... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be good for them because you know yeah, we've had a lot of fighting much. we've had a lot of fighting and there's not much that purge has been doing i feel like 
the rel last game might have been done a little bit more i mean they did get the first dragon but the ways of coming back into this game are dwindling yeah i uh i do agree wookie you know it does feel that you know purchase is has been kind of looking but it's it's been maybe a little bit more difficult to find the setup with the wukong it is you know you don't have as much cc as you do with something like the rel right you kind of you need a, a more favorable situation uh, for Wukong setup to actually be um, be Effective. worthwhile, and that yeah. generally does come later on in, in the full five v five team fights, right? That's really where he's going to find have one a here. lot of value. Absolutely could never move, not quite enough range though. CC will not land from Savage. And uh, Dragon and forty. Yeah, Dragon 40 and oh. Oh, just the bonk underneath the turret. That's going to be effortlessness getting solo killed once again. Requiem coming out now. Purge trying to make something happen. One more crushing blow will not be allowed for the Wukong as the death laser comes down from the sky. At least Jonesy Juice did. Oh, no. Don't stay there. <laughs> he's he's going to back away. He's not going to get taken down, but. This is looking pretty doomed now for the Mongeese. They are looking like they are on a quick trip down into the lower bracket. Yeah, this is uh this is a you know, like you said, a counter pick. Yeah, so zero five at the moment. Not still doing five as deaths well. to go. Yeah, still We're five to deaths pick it up to go. a little bit here. Yeah. Hopefully the game doesn't end by then, as uh it looks yeah. like Charles and his goons are going for this dragon. This might be a good team fight angle. For the Mongeese. It could. That, oh, it, yeah. that never move barely missing. But the Chain of Corruption will land. Should be enough to burst down the Karthus. Unfortunately, my game minimized again, so I don't know what's happening. They did manage to kill the Karthus. Well, the Dragon the, is still alive. Yeah. And with Purge here, should be able to lock this one away. It'll be the second Dragon of the game for the Mongeese. And a much-needed breath of life in what was feeling like a game that was quickly slipping away from them. Yeah. Definitely a little bit of breath. There's still 5,000 gold behind, though, and... I mean, it's only going to get worse, right? I mean, you do have the shutdown on the character that needs it the most right now, which is Yasuo. Um, he's, he's slowly mm. working towards his Infinity Edge, but can he get there in time before the game ends? I mean, we have shutdowns no longer available um, on the side of uh, Charles and his goons, but the turrets are still, still up. <laughs> All three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is or, one. Well, turret. there's one. Uh, that was taken down by the Mongies. Wait, Savage what? going to be, have his uh, base canceled there. And, oh, uh, no. is very far from home. Yeah, Effortlessness is going to be uh, possibly taken down once again here. He's going to go for last breath. Has his jungler waiting in the wings in July 8th. Will not be able to finish off that kill. The Jace, in fact, will have to flash away to try and survive. Karthus and Janna also on the way to make this an honest fight once again in the top lane. The E's come back off cooldown. July 8 creating the space. Purge the Surge, not able to finish the job, and he's going to get taken down by the Karthus. Savage down here in the bottom lane is not winning out. In the 1v1, Joka, with the assistance of his jungler, is oh just going to be able to burst him down as Naomi's Desire picks up the triple kill. We knew that Karthus was going to be a problem, and we're seeing it now on our screens. Yeah, this is kind of the same story as last game, right? Uh, Naomi's playing an AP jungler and needs to scale. Well, gets a couple of kills early and goes almost deathless. I mean, he did get caught in the jungle on the dragon, but, I mean, it's just... Wait, July 8th? Uh... Might be taking a yeah, little bit more damage than he wants. A little bit but... dicey, but uh, fortunately <laughs> the dicey. Baron was focusing Twitch there. Uh, Baron yeah. uh, target prioritization, not quite there. So July 8th should be all right here. Uh, and uh, has the little bit of shielding uh... that can come through from the Janna, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, we're, we're going to be... It, it, it looks it was close. close. It, it was really, close. really was, yeah. But um, he will survive. Joka potentially overextend, overstaying in the in the bot lane is going to get tagged by the chain of corruption they are going to be forced to go back in still actually trying to look for the retreat i think didn't realize that that escape path has been cut off he's going to commit the flash actually as well gets over the wall and and with the hex gate is actually completely out of there so joka a little bit of an overstay does have to use the flash but in the end no harm no foul and now 10k wookie is the oh, gold man. lead charles and the goons on the victory march yeah, they are gonna. It's gonna, looking like Joga is just returning back to the fray here on the well, bottom side. He's got side his of the team map. pushing mid now, so he's got yep. bio in multiple lanes. He has much more reason to be here. 
is still going to get collapsed on Cyclone committed, but only onto the Cassante. That is not the target that you need to be Cycloning. The Seda is going to get burst down, though. So Joka running out of support, dashing away once again, has enough dashes, because of course he does, to get away. He is Cassante after all. I think they're going to go back in with the Blast Cone. Yeah. They almost well, desire the wants a little Jeez. bit more. Yeah, Jace is split pushing the top lane with Baron this entire time. This is a numbers fight in favor of the Mongees, but I just oh, don't no. know if it's going to be enough because the Karthus is here now. He has made his way into the fight and all of the damage is going to start coming out. Jace is teleported in as well. And it's going to be Charles and the Goons absolutely dunking on the opposition as the Requiem comes oh, out and finishes gosh. off those low health members. One more shock blast to the back of the head. And that's going to be Charles and the Goons with a clean ace to close out this second game. Yep, this is uh, this is the end. I mean, there wasn't much that they could have done without the early pressure that we talked about. And I mean, especially trying to help out the Yasuo, who was repeatedly pressured down. It just wasn't enough for this Wukong pick to, to deliver. Yeah, and ultimately, you know, Charles and the Goons, clearly the better team tonight. You know, it really did feel like pretty much... Uh... Team Diff, you know, across the board here in, in tonight's match. As they were just, you know, winning out in every lane, winning the team fights, and they made it look pretty effortless. Yeah, indeed. I mean, there was a few points where it was like, okay, good pick, good pick from, uh, you know, the Mongoose. But they just couldn't do that earlier and translate that into objectives uh, quick enough. So, yeah, really good job for Charles and his goons. They'd really put on a show, and hey. Uh, they might mm -hmm. carry it uh, forward here in the playoffs. They certainly could. You know, as I briefly mentioned up at the start of the show, they are going to be up against a Titan in the next round here. Chaotic Solar, the number one seed from the regular season, always, you know, finding their way towards those finals, it seems, in, the, in this Shurima division. So that is going to be the real test for Charles and his goons to see if they can put up a, a good fight against that absolute behemoth in the in the next round but for the mongies you know on on the other side of that coin they are going to have a you know all the teams obviously in this division are pretty strong but comparatively relatively speaking the mongies are going to have a little bit of a more manageable opponent right in their next playoff match so right. hopefully they are going to be able to rally and uh and you know sort of get more on the same page in terms of how they want to be playing out these drafts and and what their win conditions actually are because you know you you did mention a moment ago that it did feel like there were maybe a couple of moments for the mint mongoose in this game where you know they found a decent pick here or there and you know maybe they had a uh, one or two decent looking team fights where they had a good setup and and were actually pressuring their opponents you know out, out of uh you know whatever area but um overall yeah. it, it really just felt like they didn't have a clear plan for how they were going to win this these games right exactly and i mean when you're not on the same page it's going to spell disaster for a team that clearly had everything they wanted delivered and more so they're going to really have to practice these compositions if they want to play out the r5 yasuo or you know okay. keep picking the swain into the Cassante. they're going to really have to hammer the details out if they want to continue in playoffs Certainly lots of work to do for the Mongies and Charles and, and the Goons. Definitely big congrats to them. A well-deserved 2-0 tonight. Who's your game to POG, Wookie? I'm going to say, I mean, I always desire again on the yeah. Carthus. Like, yeah, I mean, did the most damage this time around. So a definitely opposite game for them. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely going to be the Carthus stayed alive for the majority of the game. Only died once. Uh, 15 KDA. Nothing to scoff at. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, Naomi's Desire having a great couple of games on the Rift tonight. And uh, in game number one, right, the Gwen damage to champions, not really there. This time around, that Karth is absolutely topping out that damage to champions chart 24.5K in a 26.5-minute game. That's looking pretty good. That's just under 1,000 damage a minute. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a lot. Uh, definitely, you know, a little bit of an honorable mention here to July 8th who For also sure. had a couple of pretty phenomenal games in the mid lane there, first on the Syndra and then on the NA Jace uh, that actually looked pretty damn good in this game number two. So definitely props there. And uh, for them, yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see how they're able to match up against Chaotic Solar next week. But 
Wookie, do you have any final thoughts on tonight's matchup or anything that you wanted to uh, ponder, you know, looking forward for the season 17 playoffs? Well, I just hope this team continues on the route that they're on dominating performance in this game. Uh, you know, Charles and his goons looking good for the next game, but hopefully they can carry that through and congratulations to them. Absolutely. Looking forward to seeing what they are going to be able to accomplish moving forward here in the postseason. But for tonight, that is going to pretty much do it for us. So for myself, from Wookie here from the entire production team at Style, thank you everybody very, very much for watching. We appreciate every single one of you, especially for being here for the, the return tour of the Cookie Monsters. It had been <laughs> far too long, my friend, since yep, we were able indeed. to get in here. Glad we were able to get a cast done and hopefully we can get in some more here in the yeah. Season 17 playoffs would be very, very nice, I think. But uh, not quite sure when that next stream is going to be. I don't see anything in the schedule right now. But definitely, guys, keep those eyes and ears peeled in the Discord uh, for when that is going to come through. Hopefully, I know we are trying to get in uh, some more streams here in the playoffs. It's been a little bit light the past few weeks, uh, but I think we are going to be ramping that up as we move into the postseason. So thank you again for watching. We will see you next time. Good night.